Hello and welcome to this episode of SPSS one-on-one series with Word Analytics. Today we look at correlation analysis. What are the different types of correlation analysis that we do have? What are the assumptions and under which conditions can we appropriately use which type of correlation analysis? So let's get started. There are many types of correlation analysis out there, but before we go into them, what is correlation analysis in the first place? So correlation analysis is basically a statistical method that is used to measure the relationship between two variables, usually continuous variables. For example, you have collected age of participants and weight of participants, and you're asking yourself, is there a relationship between one's age and their weight. So correlation would be appropriate in that uh, situation. In correlation analysis, we obtain a correlation coefficient as a measure of association. This correlation coefficient establishes for us two things. One, strength of a relationship. Remember, we said correlation generally is for establishing a relationship. So correlation coefficient helps us in determining the strength of a relationship and the direction of a relationship. This correlation coefficient ranges from negative one, which shows a perfect negative correlation. As for example, age increases, weight decreases, whereas a positive one indicates a perfect positive correlation. If we have age increasing, we would have also weight increasing. Whereas a correlation coefficient of zero shows that weight does not depend on uh, age. So we have a crude, a rule of thumb when we are interpreting these correlation coefficients provided to us by Colton in 1974. With the correlation coefficient between 0 and 0 0.25, indicating little or no relationship. Every time you run a correlation, you'll get a coefficient. But this table helps us in uh, interpreting. If it is between 0 0.25 to 0 0.5, that's a fair degree of relationship. 0.51 to 0.75, that's a moderate to good relationship. And if it is above 0 0.76 to the maximum of 1, that is a very good or excellent um, relationship. <clears throat> Regardless of the sign, whether it is negative or positive, the interpretation is uh, the same. Important to note when we are running correlation analysis is we need to first visualize how our data looks like. In our example of age and weight, we need to draw a scatter plot that shows us whether in the very first place is there a relationship? Can we see a pattern in our data? So we use scatter plots for this purpose and these scatter plots, like we said, if you have a positive correlation, a perfect positive correlation with a correlation coefficient of one, of positive one, you would expect all points to fall along a straight line. But we also have this uh, correlation coefficient of 0 0.7. It is not a perfect line, but you see that as one variable increases, the other one also increases. When we have low values of X, we have low values of Y. But when we also have high values of X, we have higher values of Y. That is a positive relationship. As one increases, the other variable also increases. Now we look at one where we have a negative correlation. When you plot our graph you, and you plot the points of X and Y, you see that um, for low values of X, you have high values of Y. 
and for high values of x, you have lower values of y, meaning as x increases, y reduces. The pattern is different for uh, a different value of correlation coefficient. We have scenarios where the correlation coefficient is zero. There is no correlation at all. There is no pattern at all. We have uh, participants of values where x is low and y is low, but we also have where x is high when y is low. Similar thing where x is low, whereas y is high, so there is no clear pattern at all. Same thing for such kind of um, graph where you find that as one value increases, the other also increases up to a certain point where an increase in x results into an in a decrease in y, meaning there is no linear relationship. So visualization is very important here. Here we shall have a correlation coefficient of zero, but there is a relationship in this last example, but that relationship is not linear. Whereas in correlation, we are looking for a linear relationship. With that being said, now let's look at the different types of correlation analysis. The most common ones that you'll come across, we have Pearson's correlation, we have Spearman's rank correlation, Kendall's tau B correlation, we have point by serial correlation, and then we have partial correlation. Let's look at the details of each of these. When we are looking at Pearson's correlation, basically this measures the strength and the direction of a linear relationship between two variables. But those two variables, they should be continuous. They should be numerical in nature, like weight and age. And each of these variables have to be normally distributed. This data should be coming from a population which is normally distributed. So next we look at the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient, which measures the relationship between two variables using their ranked values. And this one is a non-parametric test. An alternative for the Pearson's correlation, if the assumptions of Pearson's have not been met, we talked of normal distribution for your data. If your data is not normally distributed, then you are going to use Pearman's rank correlation. It is also used when you have ordinal data. Here an example of say you have 10 patients whom you are collecting data on pain severity, which is just a scale of maybe 1 to 10 with 1 showing least pain and 10 indicating highest level of pain. And you also collect data on discomfort during sleep, which is also on a scale, maybe 1 to 10. That is ordinal data, has some natural order in it. Okay, So there, uh, Spearman's rank correlation would be the most appropriate. Next, we have the Kendall's tau B correlation, which is another non-parametric test. It is very similar to the Spearman's rank correlation that we've talked about, but this one, it is used to compare the number of concordant and discordant pairs. Like we say, it is similar to the Spearman, but used when you have many tied ranks or small sample sizes. So that's when we can use the Kendall's tau B correlation. We also have the point by serial correlation. And this measures the relationship between one continuous variable and one binary or dichotomous variable. This is just a special form of Pearson's correlation, but for it, instead of having both variables that are numerical in nature, one of the variables is categorical. 
for example you want to assess whether gender which is uh, which has male and female whether it is related to the math score for the students which is a numerical variable so you have categorical versus numerical and you want to see whether there is that relationship in correlation you would use point by serial correlation the p-value you will get in this point by serial correlation as we shall see in future videos it is similar to what you would get if you ran an independent samples t-test if you've not watched our video on independent samples t-test which compares a numerical outcome versus uh, a categorical variable with two levels i recommend you watch uh, our previous videos on that lastly we have um, the partial correlation which measures the strength and direction of a relationship between two variables while controlling for the effect of one or more other variables what we call the control variables or the confounders for the previous types of correlations that we've seen there were only two variables involved and the difference was either are both of them numerical in nature is the data normally distributed in the first case if both are numerical and normally distributed we said you use Pearson if data is not normally distributed Spearman if you have many pairs or tied pairs of concordant data you use the Kendall's tau b or if you have smaller sample sizes then we've seen that when you have a categorical variable versus numerical you are using the point by serial now here we are besides the two variables we are having a third variable for example you're looking at the effect of age on weight but you also think that for some reason the number of hours someone spends walking to school affects the outcome so <clears throat> partial correlation allows you to look at the relationship between age and weight while controlling for a third variable number of hours someone spends walking to school maybe it is a form of physical exercise so those are the different um, types of correlation analysis we shall be looking at how do we run each of these types of correlations in SPSS the assumptions and how to interpret them and how to report your results for your research so next we look at how do I tell whether my data is normally distributed the different ways how we can do that using the statistical and graphical methods so you consider subscribing and liking our videos so that you do not miss out any of the episodes we release see you in the next video